Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're not gonna test drive any cars, but we're gonna talk about cars. I'm gonna tell you what my take is, the future of automotive industry for the next few years, and what can you expect from multiple top brands in automotive. Well, to start with, let's talk about Lamborghini. I was fortunate enough to drive the Urus a few years ago when it came out. Wow. Honestly, it doesn't feel like an SUV. It feels like a sports car. Did you guys know in 2023, more than half of the sales of Lamborghini came from the Urus? That's mind boggling. It's crazy to think that Lamborghini sold over 5,000 Urus, but only 700 some Avantadors. 700 some, under 1,000 Avantadors, but over 5,000 Urus in 2023. And I think it was so popular, they even give it to their police, state police in Italy. Hey, California, are you listening? <laughs> now you got Aston Martin, came out with the DBX, which I was fortunate enough to have it for a couple of weeks. Extremely fast car at the DBX 707, 700 horsepower, zero to 63.0, all the bells and whistles. And actually I was seriously considering it about the daily driver because it was so awesome. Oh! <laughs> Oh, I think you need that sound. You need. Oh, well, I need a neck neck bracelet. Oh, that too. <laughs> and Ferrari came out with their own SUV, which is so good and so much in demand, which doesn't surprise me for Ferrari that sold out all the way to 2026. But to be fair. Ferrari only pledged 20% of their production for the SUV is unlike Lamborghini. They are going to limit their production, hence the demand, right? Lower numbers. So we talked about Lamborghini, Aston Martin, and you know, I have a hunch Bugatti is gonna come out with something of that nature. And then of course, McLaren. Hello, McLaren. We got some catching up to do. I think a McLaren SUV would be incredible. And then of course, Tesla. I had the Model X. I loved it. What I didn't like so much was the suspension. Um, that's frankly my only complaint with Tesla. The suspension was giving me a little bit of a lower back pain. But otherwise, I think the Model X killed it and is very, very popular SUV. What about Tesla and their Cybertruck? I don't know about the Cybertruck. Well, my opinion on the Cybertruck is it's too heavy and the range if you wanna go somewhere you know, far, again, it's gonna be a problem. The design wise, I mean, it may be cool to do a video or drive it somewhere, but I don't think I would use that as a daily driver. I just, to me, it doesn't seem that comfortable. Maybe it's just the design the exterior. I don't know. I have yet to drive one, so I can't really give you my 100% feedback. With that said, if you own a Cybertruck and you're willing to let me drive it, my doors are always open. Then of course you got the Escalade, the new Escalade V almost 700 horsepower. That thing is completely re-scanned, high performance, beautiful car. So bottom line, I think the automotive industry is just like watches. Once you go big, you can go down to a downsize, go big or go home. You know who said that? And uh, I think SUV is gonna be here to stay. It's popular and I think eventually all the cars gonna be electric. But my guess is right now we have a bottleneck for charging stations. Uh, you hear sometimes in the news, you gotta go to a charging station and sometimes wait two hours to charge your car. Well, I ain't doing that. Nobody has two hours. And I think that's gonna be the challenge. Of course, Mercedes announced they're gonna do 10,000 charging stations by 2027. And so is other manufacturers are all rushing to build these stations because without those stations and having this bottleneck, it's gonna hinder their sales for a full electric car. So that's what I think is gonna happen. 2030, you're gonna see a lot more EV, much cooler concept cars that you saw many years ago actually be on the road. And uh, for example, you got the Mercedes, the EQS. You got the 580 and then the 680 model, huge screen everywhere, really comfortable. Again, similar to the concept cars they were showing us 10 years ago. Now they're implementing them in daily driving cars that they produce. It's really exciting time to be alive. And I think in the next five years, you're gonna even see a lot more development on that front where the cars are more and more futuristic and more EV. What do you think about uh, swap stations? What is that? So basically you drive in, uh -huh. they take out your battery, they put a new battery and you drive off. What? Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, Neo, Neo has an electric car company in China have uh -huh. swap stations. Mm. So you just go in, they take out your battery. And they okay, but how about if your battery has 100,000 miles on it, right? Mm -hmm. Because every time you, drain and charge it, it loses its, you know, 
effect, yeah. right? Battery sales. Yeah. And that's why batteries have life. Yeah. Uh, how about if somebody has used it so much and somebody else hasn't so much used oh, it? Gotcha. So you're trading, yeah, that. you're not trading Apple for Apple over there. <laughs> <laughs> that's just my two cents, but yeah. yeah. Talking about Bugatti, McLaren, mm -hmm. um, um, obviously Porsche came oh, yeah. out. What do you think uh, incredible. Well, Porsche came out with a Taycan S Turbo with no turbos in it, okay. but uh, hey, um, I drove it. Incredible design when you compare it to like the Model X and other electric SUVs. Um, I loved it. Again, I'm not an EV type of guy. I don't have any electric cars. I did try several Teslas at the Model S Plaid, at the Model X, but it just doesn't do it for me. I'm a petrol head. You know, I like to feel some movement in the car when I put my foot on the accelerator, but I may not have a choice. In 10 years, five years, these car manufacturers will stop producing full gas engines. Obviously, Porsche coming out with Mission X, full electric supercar. You already had the LaFerrari P1 918. 10 years ago, they came out hybrid. So hybrid is not new. It's been out for many years, but I think now they're gonna pivot into full electric like Porsche is. And I'm um, kind of sad, but unless the driving experience of an EV supercar is gonna change by being so quiet, I may change my mind. But interesting times to be alive. I'm super excited. What do I see in 2024? Well, after all top manufacturers are done with their track cars, like the Boli Solos GT, I think they're going to announce and introduce the next generation of their hypercars. And I'm super excited. You got the new P1, the new LaFerrari replacement, the 918 replacement, and Bugatti replacement of the Chiron. So it's gonna be super interesting to see how much of this technology of EV they're gonna implement in their gas combustion engine. It's gonna be very interesting times. I think in the next two years, 2025, 2026, we're going to see the next decade what the cars are going to look like and set the tone, just like 918 LaFerrari and P1 set in 2014. All right, well, with that said, thanks for watching. Make sure you comment down below. What do you guys envision in the next two to five years with automotive industry where it's headed? Thanks for watching again. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, be safe, be well, and happy new year. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Let me show you how I turned my real estate portfolio from 1 million to $100 million in just six years. In my coaching programs, I don't just give you a roadmap. I actually teach you how to underwrite deals, how to find it, and how to add value using my strategies I've learned in the past 30 years. And there's no better time than now because the next two years are gonna present the best buying opportunities, in my opinion, for commercial real estate. Take advantage of my commercial real estate contrarian academy programs. It comes with live calls, accountability coach, as well as property previews by me. And you also get access to me on a monthly basis. Basically, in the six month time, I'm going to teach you most of my strategies that I've learned in the past 30 years that proven to be successful for me. Gain access to my free real estate training video by clicking the button below.